Uh, let me just mention these. I'd, I'd like you to look, uh, at least read through uh, this and I think the following slide or two, which uh, looks at some terminology. You hear people speaking about revenue, gross income, net income, expenses. Uh, you know, what do these things mean? Because, for example, when you get into some of these mechanisms, uh, they will use these terms, and you have to know what they mean. If somebody's talking about gross income, then that's revenue less cost of sales. That's before selling and administrative expenses. Uh, hopefully in your inbound course you have a recollection of the rules about allocating expenses. 861-8 uh, uh, is the regulation. And uh, there's a, there, it sort of goes on forever. I mean, these are, these are details which you'll love if you really have to get into them. But uh, unless you have to get into them, uh, it's, I think, at least better initially to you know, understand some concepts. Another one which I think I mentioned on, the, uh, on another slide is, is earnings and profits. Um, now, hopefully in one of your corporate courses you'll get into some detail on what earnings and profits is. And why is it important? Because a lot of the sections in the international area focus very clearly on uh, earnings and profits as a measure of various things. And uh, to just say a couple of words about it, earnings and profits is sort of retained earnings, you know, in other words, uh, on a cumulative basis. Well, I, I shouldn't say on a cumulative basis. Sometimes earnings and profits might be uh, uh, important determined on an annual basis. Sometimes it'll be important on a cumulative basis. Uh, so it could be either. But essentially, earnings and profits is, if you look at the balance sheet of a company, look at its retained earnings. Now, that's on an accounting basis. Well, we're talking taxes. Uh, isn't there a difference? Well, yes, there can be some differences. The concept of earnings and profits is primarily thinking what, um, what capacity does a corporation have to make distributions to its shareholders? What capacity does it have? Well, in the taxable income area, you might have an expense which is a real expense, but it's not deductible. Nice simple one. Are all meals and entertainment deductible these days? No, they're not. But they are still economic expenses. They reduce the ability of a company to actually make a distribution to shareholders. Uh, what about a capital loss? Are all capital losses allowed for uh, reducing uh, taxable income? No, there are limitations on capital losses, but they affect the capacity of a company to make distributions. Tax exempt income, what about, uh, uh, what is it, uh, municipal bonds are not included in federal taxable income, or at least I think that's, that's still the case. Well, they do increase the capacity of a company to make dividend distributions but they're not included in taxable income. They are included in financial statement income. What about reserves for anticipated losses? 
you know, I, uh, I don't know, um, or let's say I worry about a particular lawsuit. So I accrue an amount of expense, and I actually have a liability on my balance sheet for this possible future obligation. Now that reduces financial statement earnings and retained earnings, but it does not reduce taxable income except under very, very limited circumstances. So in that case, uh, well, uh, we have to add that back in a sense to retained earnings because that we do have until that real liability surfaces, we do have capacity to make distributions to shareholders. So these kinds of things, so earnings and profits is sort of an economic concept, which is somewhere between taxable income and financial retained earnings. So again, again, you don't have to know all sorts of details about earnings and profits, but just have a sense of what it is. Because again, it's a term you're going to see over and over again as we go forward. 